Hello, welcome everybody to the Public Art Committee meeting. Um, welcome to our newest members. We're glad to have you here. Sorry, it's took, taken us a little long to get started, but here we go. Um, today, the Arts Commission, the, the Arts Commission Public Art Committee and Metro Art staff are joining by conference call. In a moment, we'll call the roll of all the members present. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the Metro Nashville YouTube channel within two business days after the meeting. All votes will be made by roll call. All action items voted on at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in person meeting of the committee. Now, I encourage all participants to stay muted. Um, and if any committee members are having technical difficulties, uh, um, which we know you are, uh, please let me know. And I know Grace is working on that um, as we speak. Um, we have been advised that roll call can be taken during the vote regarding the motion to adopt the governor's executive order. Given that, please make sure you state your name and vote clearly when I call your name to confirm that it is you responding for the record. Um, I need to call for a motion that the meeting agenda constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 78. And if someone can make a motion. Oh, my Booker, I make a motion. Thank you, Omari. Um, is there a second? This is Campbell West, a second. Thank you. Now I'll call the roll. And this again is the, our attendance as well as the approval of the executive order. Um, and speak loudly when I say your name. Campbell West. Present. Omari Booker. Present. I think that I think we need to say yes because this is also a order. So let me let me start over. I just I just we got to be clear. I think um, Campbell West. Yes. Amari Booker. Yes. Sarah Lee Bird. Yes. Um, Alejandro Acierto, are you on yet? No. Donna Gilliam. Not on yet. Sean Giles. Yes. Great. Um, any, okay. Oh, okay. Now we need to do approval of the minutes from the March 11th, 2020 and March 4th, 2021. Uh, Commissioner Alvis Alejandro is here. I just unmuted okay. him. Okay. Alejandro. Thank you. Um, so we're approving the board minutes from this range of period, right? Grace from March 11th to March 4th. 20th. Yes. So we just got approval to start doing that. I apologize for the backlog. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the way it has it. I'm, I'm do any commissioners have any changes or any discussion regarding the minutes from all those past board meetings. I think uh, Grace sent them to you earlier. Correct? Yeah. All right, well, I need someone to make a motion to approve. Before we do that, Grace, correct me if I'm wrong. Our our new PAC members will not vote on this since they were not present for those meetings. Um, they're actually more than welcome to if they were able okay. to review Great. them. But if they do feel uncomfortable just because they weren't part of the meeting, they're more than welcome okay. to abstain as well. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? Uh, this is Alejandro Acerto. I'll make a motion to approve these minutes. Thank you. Second. Omari Booker, I second. Thank you, Omari. All right, well, I will call the roll. Um, Campbell West. Campbell? Yes. Omari Booker? Yes. Sarah Lee Bird? Yes. Alejandro Alcierto? I think I heard yes. Yes, you did. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, Donna Gilliam, did she get on? 
No, oh, we're we're still working on it. Okay, Sean Giles. Yes. Okay, great. I think now I'm going to turn this over to Van. Thank you, Jane. Welcome, everybody. Um, as Jane mentioned, we have our two new amazing public art committee members with us today. Welcome to Sean and Sarah Lee. Um, if either of you all want to say anything, uh, I, I told both of you that we all we all know a creepy amount of biographical information about you because I got to present on all of your accolades and talents and experiences. Um, but if you'd like to say hello to your fellow committee members, I'd love to give you all an opportunity to do so. Okay, I will. Um, this is Sean Giles. I will say uh, hello and I am happy to be here today. Thanks for uh, inviting me to join you all. Thank you, Sean. Hi, um, I just also wanted to say thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this group. I am uh, committed to Nashville and its arts through journalism and through life and through, you know, just being part of it. And so I'm really excited to be a part of this committee and get to um, uh, know what's going on and be a part of it all. So I also wanted to invite you guys to some public art that's happening in town right now. Just um, in case you haven't heard of it, it's called Leaves of Grass and it's happening at Fisk through, um, let's see, I have the date right here, through the 31st of May. And um, it is an artist from Ghana who is um, uh, created an installation collaboration with the students there and it's absolutely spectacular. So um, if you can make it by, I would recommend it since we all love public art. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, friends. Here's the second part of the big announcement other than greeting our new colleagues. Um, I will be taking some time off in June and July because uh, you don't know this because you can't see me, but I'm seven and a half months pregnant. So I'm going to be having a baby and taking some time off. Um, our baby was our 20. Uh, 2020 surprise, um, but we're very excited and um, there is a chance we may try and do a July pack meeting. We will be in touch before I leave if that does get scheduled, um, but you'll be in wonderful hands with the rest of the public art staff and with Grace, of course. Um, but I just wanted to give you all a heads up that I might be off the grid for um, eight to nine weeks to take care of our growing family. So, yes. Grace, can we advance? <laughs> congratulations. Thank you, Campbell. Yes, congratulations. One of Grace, thank you, thank busy you. trying to get that on. We have two action items and a grace is working hard to get people on board. Um, um, I believe we have we'll give her Donna calling in. Is that you Donna? Yeah. Yay. Wonderful. Donna. Okay. I will, I will keep working to troubleshoot, but for the meantime, at least you can hear us. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got everybody to some degree. Um, we can move on to our action items. So we've got, we've got two great things the staff has been working really hard on. Our first one, um, Casa Gardner Senior Park, Community Canvas semifinalist, and I will hand it over to Trey. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see you, you all virtually. Um, I will be presenting today our semifinalists for the Kasi Gardner Senior Park Project. So, um, Grace, if you could go to the next slide. Um, just to kind of remind you all of this project, it's located at 1606 Jefferson Street, um, just across from where Woodcuts Gallery is um, and, and right near the campus of Fisk. Um, notably, I think the closest major intersection would be Jefferson Street and DB Todd. Um, so, there's a brand new pocket park that Parks has opened up. This is actually a photo of the canvas, and uh, we're hoping that this space will be a rotating, um, a space for rotating installations, um, lasting uh, you know up to two years. 
Um, for this first iteration, we have a project budget of $50,000. So that goes um, towards materials, artist fees, and, and hopefully around uh, some community programming that, that can be tied to this project or at least to the neighborhood um, surrounding. So we're very excited about this. Um, the call to artists was limited to artists working in Davidson County. Um, we only received nine submissions, um, which was a little bit lower than our typical kind of, um, you know, submission, but it's kind of expected for a, a kind of a smaller neighborhood project and a, a local call. Um, and then with the panel, we met earlier this week and have three semifinalists that were recommended. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, some of the feedback that I did get from the panel is that you're going to see some artists that you're very familiar with. Um, and, and I think that's a good thing, but also a bit of a challenge that we continue to face. So um, just thinking ahead, I think within the coming couple of months, what we're definitely going to try to, um, you know, have some conversations, not only with the artists, but with some of the community members and the panelists and, and figure out how we can flex that budget to really kind of bring in other artists that might be working in this space. Um, and then obviously, you know, with the rotating artwork, it gives an opportunity to to kind of figure out, you know, what's next in a couple of years. So, um, but we are very excited to know that we're going to get hopefully a great piece of artwork on this wall um, this summer. So um, if you could go to the next slide, I will begin to present the semifinalist. Um, the first semifinalist is Woke 3. Um, also, Jamal Jenkins, as some of you might know him as. Um, he's a member of the North Art Collective, and um, I'll just kind of go through a few of the pieces that he submitted um, for this, this project. Um, so, Grace, yeah, you, you can kind of just go through these, maybe give a, you know, five, ten seconds for each piece. Um, and another thing that that I experienced for the first time, and, and you'll see later, was um, artists that formerly had submitted quite often as a collective, being North Art Collective, submitting um, as individuals, which I think brought up a bit of a challenge that, you know, I hadn't really thought about, which is shared work. So there were pieces that you'll notice, um, you'll see later on in the presentation that are the same piece um, that were collaborative in, in kind of one of the questions that did come up during the um, during the early deliberations, but hopefully we can kind of address during the interview process is, um, you know, what role did you have in, in specific parts of, of the creation of these pieces? So, um, yeah, while exciting, the collaboration is exciting. It is kind of a, a tricky situation when you're trying to, to score two different artists who um, did work on the same piece. And while we're going through these examples, I will say, and, and Trey sums it up perfectly, um, the call was open to artist teams. So it was a very, you know, deliberate choice on the part of these artists to not uh, apply as a collective, but as individuals. So it wasn't that there wasn't an opportunity to apply, but they, they made that choice um, intentionally. And, and um, yes, so it, it was an amazing conversation. And I think having a robust conversation around um, creative authorship and ownership at a selection panel level is really exciting. And I think it's a testament to Trey's work to really compile this panel of experts um, who are thinking about this work and this process through the lens of the community, but also from their really high level artistic experience as curators, as visual artists. Um, so I was just, yeah, I was blown away. These are all good challenges to have um, and good challenging conversations too. So I just wanted to put that out there that there's the option to, to apply as a team, but everyone chose to apply as individuals in this situation. Thank you. Um, the next in my finals is Alicia Wu. She actually um, owns One Drop Inc. Studio, which is directly across the street um, of Cassie Gardner Senior Park, and um, I believe is actually the former location of the Cassie Gardner um, Funeral Home. Um, 
And so we're excited to have her. She was also um, awarded a Thrive Project, um, which she used as one of her examples that uh, she did recently last year and did a, a Nashville themed coloring book. Um, you'll only see a couple of pages from that, but uh, yeah, that's a, a really cool um, engagement that she did. And, and one of my favorite things that Thrive has, has um, been a part of and been able to support. coloring book. So both um, Woke 3 and Alishaba were Learning Lab graduates and um, all three of the artists have been Thrive recipients. So we're excited to see that kind of training investment continue to develop and that relationship to continue to grow with these individuals. And then the final semifinalist was Dojo. Um, also known as Joseph Love the third. Um, and uh, he's also a member of North art collective and um, as you'll see in some of his examples, he collaborated with with woke um, and, and possibly RJ as well uh, to. To do some of these these works, so you'll see, um, I believe it's the. Um, Just love uh, coffee shop piece as well as the. Um, the curly Magruder mural I, I and forgive me i i do not remember the title off the top of my head um somebody knows it shout it out for me um, i think that Omar, was i know you were yeah family yeah. matters yes i'm pretty sure yeah and then the And then, um, so, yeah, just before we get to the timeline, I did want to kind of um, offer up a chance for Sean or Alejandro to speak. Uh, they were both members of the panel. Um, Sean was actually a part of the panel kind of before he he took on his pack role. So he was kind of serving as as a member of that selection panel and, and Alejandro was serving as the pack representative in this specific um, selection. Um, so yeah, Sean and, and Alejandro, if you have any comments you'd like to make about um, the selection, um, yeah, feel free to to kind of share that with with the rest of the pack. Um, this is Alejandro. So uh, one of the things actually that we talked about was less. Uh, I mean, we talked of course about all of the applicants, um, but there were some uh, interesting. Um, moments where we noted some uh, the need for larger support structures for artists um, applying for these kinds of projects um, that I think is, is notable here. Um, so possibly offering or thinking around um, workshops or um, kind of uh, mentorships for artists as they apply in part because some of the applicants um, either did not fully take advantage of uh, the space and the capacity of um, you know what we would be able to see um, as uh, adjudicators. I, I, I did not have a you know a vote, but I was also just looking at the process, um, and so it was it was clear that you know some folks didn't know that they could use more space or they chose not to, um, and and or a lot of the language just wasn't very clear, um, and so we thought it would be helpful for artists to have access to uh, other kinds of you know tutorials or uh, workshops to allow them to. Uh, be more competitive in in future um, uh, applications. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, along with that, uh, we we did uh, feel like uh, we did end up with three really strong semifinalists. Uh, so um, you know, realizing that there are uh, some uh, some things that can be improved in in, in uh, some of the what the applicants presented. Uh, we do feel like we did end up with uh, some really strong semifinalists at the end. So uh, a very uh, very interesting process to to go through. With a great learning experience. 
Thank you all. And, and I will add um, kind of just to, to tag on to what Alejandro was speaking about. Uh, we offered, so usually we do a, a letter of interest that we ask each applicant to um, submit with their proposal. But for this one, we actually um, prepared four short answer questions. Um, so there was kind of a, a clear divide in some of the, the, the thoroughness of the answers and kind of um, detail that, that was provided. And, and obviously the three artists that were selected are, are very um, engaged in this work already and, and kind of seem to have, you know, something very sustainable and, and um, you know, full that, that they were able to provide. And some of those other artists might have been more competitive if, if maybe they had some coaching around that. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely something that, that we'll take, take forward and think about um, if we do use this kind of format with the short answer questions and um, specifically when you're asking about community. And um, yeah, so I thank you all for that. I appreciate it. Um, so our proposed timeline kind of moving forward, um, pending the approval of the semifinalists today, we'll be doing our semifinalist interviews on the week of May 10th and would have a final artist selection um, recommendation um, following that. Uh, we we have a May 20th commission meeting that we're kind of aiming for. And um, I know we kind of talked about maybe having a conversation here about, um, and, and Van, correct me if I'm wrong, but about, you know, do, do we want to schedule some type of very quick PAC meeting just to kind of go through that? Or is that something that um, you all are comfortable with, whichever of these three artists are are approved and we can kind of conditionally uh, just move that forward to commission. I think our biggest goal is to to kind of get some artwork in that space. Um, it's, it's been blank for a little while and uh, as summer and spring gets, gets here, uh, we wanna get moving as soon as possible, um, not to rush the process, but um, definitely trying to, to get started. Um, so our hope is to have you know, project development and install done later this spring and early in the summer, um, and hopefully having a, an unveiling and community event um, and continued programming beyond the summer uh, of this summer 2021. Yes, and as Jay mentioned, our timeline, and it's partially because we're using temporary funds to pay for this first installation. And so those temporary funds do expire July 1st, or we have to have invoiced um that amount in its uh completion by july 1st so we're in a little bit of a time crunch and i think we want to first and foremost make sure everybody on the public art committee feels um informed and included and confident about who this final artist is um based on the recommendations of the section panel so we can do one of two things we can Send you all a robust email update, letting you know how the selection panel shook out, what the scores were, um, who was identified as the finalist, and any kind of remarks, feedback from um, the selection panel meeting. And then we forego a PAC meeting to vote on that and allow our board of commissioners to directly vote on it. Or we can have a lightning quick um, PAC meeting in uh, just a few weeks. We'd have to do a pretty quick turnaround to make it to that March 20th commission meeting because we have to have PAC before a board of commissioners would vote on it. Um, and we can do just that one action item, present the individual to you all and you can take a formal vote. It is completely up to this body. Staff will be more than happy to oblige either option. Um, but we are in kind of an awkward place because of the bucket of money that we're using and things took a little longer than we anticipated. So we're here with these two options. We're open to hearing what people feel comfortable with, whether it is um, kind of a virtual update and we allow the commissioners to just go ahead and vote on it, even though PAC hasn't voted on it, uh, which is legally they have the ultimate and final say um so that would not be a conflict in any way or we can happily 
and hopefully virtually uh, convene very quickly to review that in person, take a vote on it, and then it can go back to our commissioners on the 20th of May for them to vote on. So it's it's up to you all and what you feel comfortable with. The staff will make whatever option of whatever of those two options work um, as quickly and seamlessly as possible. Van, just one thing about that. Um, I don't know if we can do virtual meetings in May. Um, right now, it doesn't look like it's going okay. to be So just bear that in mind. It would have to be an in-person meeting more than so likely. Good. That could change in the next week, but right this minute, you need to be aware that it might not. <laughs> so take that into consideration. <laughs> And I so apologize. Discussion about this. Anybody got any feelings, strong feelings about it either way? Scamble. Um, I think option one is great with the selection committee choosing and presenting okay. the pack as long as legally it's not a conflict. Um, all three artists we're familiar with and all are strong. Thank you, Campbell. Anybody else? I, I tend to agree with Campbell myself. Um but and I'm also sorry, I don't mean to slow us down, but I am happy to answer, answer any questions about just the recommendations in general um, before we do get, you know, past that. But I'm, I'm okay with option one. Uh, yes, I am as well. Yeah, this is Amari. I, I am also. I, um, you know, yeah, I, I am also. I, I definitely think the most kind of challenging piece of, of of if it were awarded to Wilker Dojo it would be the amount of work they built together. So, so if, mm -hmm. if anything does work into the um, yeah, I know I know that we we had talked about like potentially you know funds that could. I, I'm not sure what was. I think Trey mentioned something about. Um, I don't know something else being involved in in the in the final um, yeah. you know the final project, but but yeah, I think that would be the only thing that would be a little um, yeah that 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 the only thing that I, that would be a little bit challenging if it came down to one of them, it would be sort of like um, the Steph Curry or Clay Thompson get the get the <laughs> ring. It's kind of like well, both of them get the ring. <laughs> so so um so yeah, but and, and I also understand that, that there was the option to to apply as a as a collective and that wasn't taken up. But um but yeah, hopefully they'll they'll hopefully if, if it goes to one of them, there'll be some way to kind of kind of give some honor to the to the work that they that they have done collectively. So anyway, that's that's my two cents. Outside of that, I think it's a great three. There's no wrong, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I agree with everyone else as far as the, um, yeah, as far as who, um, yeah, as far as not necessarily needing to meet again on it. Yeah. Thanks, Great. Amari. And it will be interesting to see if anyone choose whoever the final artist is. You know that budget is theirs to to work with. Um, so there's no limits if if they do want to hire somebody else on. So that'll be interesting. It'll, it'll be yeah, fascinating to see how that shakes out. Definitely, yeah, for sure. Okay. We ready for motion or here we go. Okay, this you see the action item that's requested. Does anybody would like to make a motion to approve? So my booker, I move to approve the uh, motion of Alicia Bill Morzik, Wolf Three and Dojo for the community project at Casa Gardner Park. Great, is there a second? Yeah, this is Alejandro. Alejandro. Oh. Go ahead, Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll second. Okay, great. Are there any, any further discussion about these before we take a vote? Anybody else, any hands? Okay, <clears throat> Campbell West. Yes. Hamari Booker. Yes. Yes. Alejandro Acierto. Yes. Donna Gilliam. Yes. Sean Giles. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Next, we've got Anne Leslie, I think. 
Thank you, God. Appreciate it. Thanks, Trey. And Leslie. Thank you very much. Yeah. Amazing work. Thank you, Trey. And Leslie. Take I'm out. here. <laughs> Hello. Good morning, everyone. Um, today we are bringing a proposal to you for temporary artwork installation on Metro property. Um, the and if you go ahead and go to the next slide, please, Grace. The request comes from the Nashville, whoop, the Nashville Tree Foundation, a local nonprofit um, who is seeking approval for artist designed temporary artworks created from ash trees located in multiple metro parks. Uh, the purpose of the project is to raise awareness of the very destructive um, emerald ash borer. Um, that is the green insect that you see there on the screen. Um, in reality, um, these insects are no larger than a dime. Um, this is, or because this is a temporary um, art project um, proposed for Metro property, it comes to Metro Arts uh, for review and approval according to our temporary artwork on Metro property review process. This process is one that we developed with other Metro departments, um, particularly parks and public works to provide our expertise um, in vetting um, artwork proposals and making sure things like maintenance and removal of the artwork um, have been agreed upon by everyone. And so this proposal um, is scheduled to go before the parks board on May 4th. And you see an example um, of, you know, what it could something a potential you know, project could look something like um, that a tree that was there on the left hand side that with the arm and then, of course, it has an emerald ash borer um, there on the trunk. And this is from the Chicago tree project. Next slide, please, Grace. The Nashville Tree Foundation has been working um, closely with Metro Parks staff to identify ash trees that are suitable for sculptures and that are located um, in publicly accessible locations. In 2021, with Metro approval, they'd like to complete sculptures um, at five to ten different trees. Um, some of these trees um, have already been identified and they are in um, these parks, um, the 1st Avenue North Bicentennial Park that's there by Fort Nashboro along the West Bank um, of the river downtown. They're also looking at Shelby Park in East Nashville, Centennial Park in West Nashville, uh, Warner Parks um, further into West Nashville, Cedar Hill Park in Madison. They're also looking at um, possibly Severe Park, Two Rivers Mansion, and Elmington Park. Uh, one of the things that we have talked about with the Nashville Tree Foundation is Metro's interest in see seeking um, out an equitable distribution across the county. The Nashville Tree Foundation understands this and is committed to working with Metro Parks to achieve this. Next slide, please, Grace. So while most um, of the artwork um, sites, the trees have been identified, the artist and the design concepts have yet to be determined. The Nashville Tree Foundation proposes to solicit artist designs through an open call to artists, and those artist designs would be reviewed and selected by a jury of community members. Um, sculpture size would be dictated by the trunk and the branching of the specific ash tree selected, but they expect these to be about, um, well, a little less than 15 feet tall and no more than 10 feet wide. And here's another example from the Chicago tree project on which this project was modeled. Materials and processes um, would be detailed in each artist's proposal. Um, and then the final artist selections and the proposed artworks would be subject to final approval by Metro. Next slide, please, Grace. So here is their schedule. Um, if the Nashville Tree um, Foundation receives the go ahead from Metro, they would then promote the project, circulate the artist RFP, finalize the tree selections, uh, moving into the summer, they would convene that community selection panel and make those artist selections, begin preparing the trees, and then by fall, they would be fabricating sculptures and hosting an exhibit opening. And here you see another one of those um, trees from Chicago with looking kind of like a totem pole. 
almost like faces. Yeah. Next slide, please, Grace. So we have reviewed um, this uh, proposal with Metro Park staff and Park staff are ready to recommend approval to the Parks Board. Having the review and approval of the Public Art Committee would certainly strengthen that recommendation. The Parks staff um, recommendation is based on several key considerations. They understand that the Emerald Ash Borer is a real problem. It will kill 10% of Nashville's trees in five years. This is all of the ash trees. Um, the project is consistent with Metro's overall response to the Emerald Ash Borer. The trees uh, sculptures will become the property of the Nashville Tree Foundation, um, and this is not a donation or grant. And the Nashville Tree Foundation and the individual artist um, will be responsible for all the liability associated with the creation, maintenance, and removal of the sculptures. There's another example with um, birds in an ash tree. Grace, if you'll move to the next one. So, um, because this is a project um, that has multiple steps, um, we thought it might be best to bring it to you and let you understand the entire scope of the project um, with as much information as we know at this time. Um, but, you know, similar to what we um, agreed with about the Cossie Park you know, project, Cossie Gardner Park project, um, if you would let us uh, move forward um, with the um, approving the final design, um, the artist, um, and the sites, and working out any project details with PARC, that would mean we wouldn't have to come back to you at a future PAC meeting. So, uh, Jane, I'll turn it back over to you. I'm still here, sorry. Um, <laughs> does anybody have any questions or any discussion about this? Pretty cool. We've had to take down two ash trees in our yard just this year, so it's it's going to be a big problem. Yeah, yeah big time. Um, any discussion? Uh, anybody want to uh, make a motion, please? Mrs. Campbell, I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, and second. I second that. Donna. I'll second. Thank you, Donna. All right, well, I'm going to call the roll then, unless there's anything else. Okay, hey, great job, Anne Leslie. Just thank you. Really cool. That's a really great project. But really cool. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Campbell West? Yes. Yes. Amari Booker? Yes. Sarah Lee Bird? Yes. Alejandro Acierto? Yes. Donna Gilliam? Yes. Yeah. Sean Giles. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, what do we have next, Van or Grace? And we actually don't have any project or program updates. Um, that was it for our agenda today. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you, everybody. And I do look forward to meet with folks in person. And again, I think I, I've said it about 10 times. It's more than likely that will be what will happen the next time, but that could change. But I, anyway, I look forward to seeing you again and continuing to work with everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, staff. You guys are amazing. Thank, Thank you, James. Okay. Appreciate you. Bye-bye.